Love journeys to forever in whose envy, and it's here today, binding to my hand. And I thought for a uh, non-Christian, that wasn't too bad. Uh, for someone that didn't have any foundation in God, I thought, I was impressed with his thoughts on love and what it is. But unfortunately, the world in which we live in has no concept of what love really is. We use the word so many times in so many different ways to, to uh, find ourselves with so many different things. Like we love certain foods and certain things in life and this, that, and other thing. But love, as God ordains it, and as God put it into this world, is entirely different than what the world looks at as far as love is concerned. When I was talking with, with uh, Zach and Jimmy about the wedding ceremony and what they wanted to do today, I suggested a, a passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If, if most of you are familiar with that, that's of course known as the love chapter in the Bible. And I was kind of surprised and thrilled when uh, Zach wrote me back and said, well, that's good, we like that, but uh, we've been thinking about Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. And, uh, uh, I am thrilled. Colossians 3, 6, uh, 3, verse 12 through 17 are familiar verses, and I grew up not on the King James Bible, I grew up on the New International Version and, and really enjoyed that. But I wanted to do something different uh, for Zach and Emily, and so I looked at a different translation, one of the newer ones. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but there's one that's called The, the, uh, the Message. It was translated in uh, first came out in 1993, so it is 17 years old. But uh, it, it says these words this way. Listen car carefully to the way the, that Paul wrote to the church of Colossae this year, okay? He put it this way. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, dressed in the wardrobe, God picked out for you compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and as completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all previous karma. Never do that. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of God, the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your life, the words, your action, whatever be done, be done in the name of the master, Jesus. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. Without Christ in your life, you really don't know what love is all about. We use that term in so many different ways. But I thought that that expression of love was something that was very, very fitting and and for Zach. And so I'm thrilled really to be able to use it this morning. And use it as the basis of our marriage thoughts today. These thoughts of mine will be this one. Zach, you're about to assume a solemn responsibility. The lady of your choice is to become your wife. She whom you're about to wed is to unite her life with yours. This is the greatest evidence that she can give to love for you. May you prove yourself worthy. For you only will she live. You know you're only one in this whole vast world, and you are all the world. And then you too are assuming a great responsibility. You are to become the wife of a new household. He who you are about to wed will look to you for solace and comfort. The home you make for him will be his place of refuge and peace. Your smile will be the sunshine of his day. Your words will be his wisest counselor. Your voice will be music to his ears. For you only will he live. 